Uh, and I think that's all. Okay, thank you so much, Edgar. We learned some vocabulary. We learned something about giving advice and suggestions, but today we're gonna review it a little more. Thank you. And Alicia, what do you remember from our previous lesson? Um, I remember, <clears throat> sorry, I remember talk about a uh, suggestion and advice and how to use a show cool or neat. And uh, in the vocabulary, I don't remember, sorry. <laughs> Okay, don't worry, Lisa. Today we're gonna review a little bit more about this, uh, but we're also gonna practice uh, our speaking skills. Okay, so let's continue then. Okay, this is the part that we didn't learn, uh, learn in our previous lesson. We only mentioned uh, something about it, but today we're gonna learn more about it. Okay, uh, here we have the topic advice and suggestion. So we learned three different model verbs that we can use to give advice and suggestions. These are the model verbs, should, could, uh, need. Okay, so let's see. Okay, can you see this picture? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, thank you. In English, we have different uh, many different model verbs that we can use to give suggestions and advice to someone else. But uh, each model verb has a different meaning. And as you can see in this picture, we have might, may, could, can, should, would, will, must, and have to. Okay, and as you can see in this uh, graphic, and uh, each one has a different color. This means that each one of these verbs has a different intensity or a different meaning, okay? For example, might is like the, the lowest verb and it doesn't have too much meaning. But if we compare might to have to, uh, we can say that have to is the modal verb that has much meaning in this case, okay? Uh, for example, should is in the middle of this graphic. Should is before should. Okay. For example, can you give an example using using should, uh, Alicia? Please. Um, example. An example um, using should. Uh, I. Probable uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> For example, when someone is sick, what do you usually say? What sorry? When someone is sick, what do you usually say? Ah. Uh. And I should probably uh, uh, drink the tea, the cinnamon tea. Okay, I should probably drink a cinnamon tea. Yeah. Okay, excellent. I should probably drink uh, a cinnamon tea. Okay, Edgar, can you give me an example you think cook, please? Uh... Could you repeat me the question, please? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean it's, it's okay, 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 okay. Could you repeat the question, please? Okay, excellent. That's a good example. And Benjamin, can you give an example using have to, please? Have to? Have to. This one. Okay. Uh, I I have to go to the office today. Okay, I have to go to the office today. Okay, that's a good example. Well, you mentioned I have to go to the office today. And if you are using have to as a model verb in this case, that means that if you don't go to the office, 
today. Uh, your boss probably will fire you and because this has some consequences. Okay, as you can see, um, uh, do you have any questions? Uh, no. Okay. Esto depende del grado de intensidad que tiene cada uno de estos verbos. Por ejemplo, este es el que tiene menos intensidad y este es el que tiene más intensidad. Y should, eh, podríamos decir que está en la mitad de esta gráfica, eh, no tiene como un término medio de intensidad. Okay, aquí tenemos have to y must. Estos son los que tienen más intensidad en el idioma inglés. Por ejemplo, must es algo que debemos hacer. Y have to igual es algo que debemos hacer. Y si no lo hacemos, va a ocurrir algo. Va a tener consecuencias. Ok. A diferencia de might y may, que si no hacemos, son sugerencias. Que si no hacemos estas sugerencias, eh, no, no, pasa, no pasa tanto. Ok. Any questions? Para most, eh, igual uh, habría consecuencias o solo con have to. Ok, good question. Igual con most, eh, hay consecuencias. Most y have to. For example, eh, if someone tells you, um, you must do your homework or you must study for your exam. Ok, por ejemplo, si no estudias para tu examen, puedes aprobar. Y lo mismo con have to. You have to, you have to do your homework. Tienes que hacer tu tarea. Okay? Porque si no haces tu tarea, eh, igual puedes reprobar. Okay? Con ambos hay consecuencias. Y con may y con my, eh, no hay tanta consecuencia como con estos dos. ¿Ok? Entonces, la única diferencia es que have to es como mayor eh, intensidad que más Exacto. funcionan igual ok ok como podemos ver en esta gráfica hay diferentes colores y aquí tenemos el rojo esto nos indica que ambos tienen eh, la intensidad pero en este caso have to presenta una mayor intensidad que más okay. you have to okay. you must eh, hay una pequeña diferencia pero no tanto depende del contexto en el que estén Ok. Ok, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Benjamin, Alicia, do you have any questions for this? No, it's okay. No. Ok. Well, and here we have a brief explanation of how we can use uh, each one of these model verbs. First, we have should, and here we have some examples. Uh, for example, you should go to the doctor, he'll tell you what to do. Uh, deberías ir al doctor, él te dirá qué es lo que puedes hacer. You shouldn't go to bed too late, you need more sleep. No deberías irte a la cama tan tarde, necesitas dormir más. And here we have a why don't you. Have you ever heard this expression or this phrase? Why don't you? No, I haven't. You haven't. Okay, no. Edgar, no, Alicia, Benjamin, have you ever heard about it? ¿Por qué tú no? Okay, más o menos, tú no. Eh, en español podríamos decir por qué no. ¿Por qué no hacemos esto? ¿Por qué no vamos okay. al cine? ¿Por qué no vamos a comer? Es como una sugerencia, le estamos sugiriendo a la otra persona que hagamos algo. And here we have uh, an example at... Uh, Benjamin, can you help me reading this one, please? Uh, I, I know it's difficult to find, but why don't you look on the internet? Okay, thank you. I know it's difficult to find, but why don't you look on the internet? Sé que es difícil de encontrar, pero ¿por qué no buscas en el internet? Okay, and here we have other example. And Alicia, can you help me read in this one, please? Yeah. Uh, why don't you wait here for a moment? Uh, I'm sure she will be back very soon. Okay, thank you. Why don't you wait here for a moment? I'm sure she'll be back very soon. ¿Por qué no esperas aquí un momento? Estoy seguro que ella regresará muy pronto. ¿Por qué no? 
Okay, entonces quedamos que esto es por qué no. And here we have how about plus ing. Have you ever heard about it? Have you ever heard about this expression? How about? Yeah, it's worth like the suggestions. Yes, that's right. It's like a suggestion. Okay, how about? Eh, ¿Por qué no igual? You look bored. How about going for a walk? We could go to the river. Parece aburrido. ¿Qué tal si vamos a caminar? ¿Qué tal si? Okay, ¿Qué tal si vamos a caminar? Podríamos ir al río. Y here we have other example. How about you stay here and I go and look for help? Okay. ¿Qué tal si te, si te quedas aquí y yo voy a buscar ayuda? ¿Qué tal si? Okay. Entonces quedaríamos que esto es ¿qué tal si? Okay. Y como pueden ver, aquí podemos utilizar esta estructura o esta expresión con un verbo que termina con ing o con un verbo en infinitivo. Por ejemplo, aquí. How about going? Que termina con ing o un verbo en infinitivo. How about you stay? Ok. Any questions with it? Uh, when we use... Uh... Uh, very infinitive uh, ing form. Well, okay, there is no difference between these two uh, verbs. Uh, you can use either uh, either ing or a very infinitive. For example, you can say here. Here we have how about going. And you also can say uh, how about to go for a walk. Okay. And also here, here we have how about you stay or how about a stay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Alicia, Benjamin, any questions? No, it's okay. It's okay. No. Okay. And then here we have must and have to. Okay. The ones that we, uh, that we learned in the picture. And as you can see here, it says that it's for a strong advice. Okay, para una sugerencia eh, con intensidad fuerte. For example, Edgar, can you hear me reading this one, please? Uh, sure. You must go to the doctor immediately. That looks serious. Okay, you must go to the doctor immediately. That looks serious. Okay. Y como pueden ver, es una recomendación fuerte que si no la haces, puede pasar algo. Por ejemplo, en este ejemplo nos dice, deberías ir al doctor inmediatamente. Eso parece muy serio. Okay. Y aquí, that looks serious. Eso significa que esa persona puede que esté muy enferma y si no va al doctor, le podría pasar algo, algo, algo más grave. Okay. Um, and here we have uh, Alicia, can you help me read this one, please? Yeah. Uh, you have to take her to that movie. She's going to love it. Okay. Thank you. You have to take her to that movie. She's going to love it. Okay. Aquí deberías o tienes que llevarla a ver esa película. A ella le va a encantar. Okay, puede que esta película sea uh, la película favorita de esta persona. Y si no la lleva, puede que pase algo, ¿no? Puede que se moleste con esta persona, puede que ya no la vuelvan a pasar en el cine. Okay, depende del contexto. Pero como pueden ver, ambos eh, tienen como este, esta intensidad muy fuerte al momento de dar un consejo o una sugerencia. ¿Any questions, please? No, sir. No. Okay. Okay, and finally we have this one. I, well, we suggest. Plus that you, okay? For example, we have, I suggest that you eat more vegetables. Es para dar eh, sugerencias. Yo sugiero que comas más vegetales. I suggest that you should take a holiday. You look so tired. Eh, 
sugiero o te sugiero que tomes unas vacaciones, te ves muy cansado. ¿Okay? Como pueden ver, esa es la estructura. Primero va el sujeto, luego el sujeto, luego that. Y lo que sigue de la oración. Okay. Any questions with this uh, model verb? No, sir. Okay. No. Okay. Excellent. Uh, here we have a, kind of like a tip that says you should can be very strong. And people sometimes soften it by saying, I think you should, maybe you should, you should probably. Okay, aquí nos dice que eh, la expresión you should eh, en ocasiones puede ser muy fuerte y las personas usualmente eh, o en ocasiones hacen que esta expresión eh, sea un poco menos fuerte agregando las siguientes expresiones. I think, maybe, or probably. Okay. No, eh, si decimos solo you should, en ocasiones puede ser como que muy agudo, muy fuerte para algunas personas. Y es por ello que se sugiere utilizar las siguientes expresiones. Yo creo que deberías, tal vez tú deberías, o probablemente deberías. Okay. Si les agregamos estas expresiones a la expresión should, eh, de alguna manera se vuelven menos, menos fuertes. ¿Tienes preguntas? No. 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 Okay. So, so far, um, what do you learn or what did you learn from advice and suggestion? Can anyone tell me uh, something about it? Well, we can check uh, the different types of intensities uh, with uh, modal verbs. Uh, probably might is the the lowest. Um, have to is the the stronger. Um, also, as you mentioned before, uh, when we use should, uh, probably we need to uh, uh, well keep in mind that it's very strong for people. Um, we we have to use with with the three phrases on the chat on the chat okay okay excellent Edgar. thank you well you mentioned a uh, stronger do you remember that word a stronger yep okay there is a difference between strongest and a stronger okay oh okay. sorry <laughs> do you know the difference between these two words uh well stronger is when you compare with other well two two things two yeah two things and um, the strongest is uh, when is the most uh, stronger than the other ones okay excellent well we use strongest to refer that something is like the strongest thing in the world, okay? Como que la cosa más fuerte. Era que tiene mayor intensidad. Y we use stronger, as you mentioned, to compare two things. For example, we compare um, one thing to other thing. Uh, the thing number one is the stronger, is stronger than thing number two. Okay, comparamos dos objetos o dos cosas, dos personas. Y podemos decir, la persona número uno es más fuerte que la persona número dos. Por lo tanto, la persona número uno es the strongest. ¿Ok? Eh, ok, there's yeah, a thank difference. You. Thank you. Alicia, Benjamín, any questions with this? No, no, it's ok. Ok, so let's continue. Then. Okay, so in the previous class, we didn't have chance to learn uh, these six new words, but today we're gonna review it um, briefly. Okay, here we have six words, and the first one is association. 
Do you know this word? Or do you know what it means? Uh, it's like a, a group of person or, or, uh, yeah, a group. Okay. It's like a group of, uh, of people. For example, here we have any association with the former company will put us in a negative light. Okay. It's like, uh, let's see there. Okay. A group of people who work together in a single organization for a particular purpose. For example, the football association. Es un grupo de personas que eh, en sí trabajan juntas para una sola organización o empresa con un propósito en común o particular. Es una asociación. Igual en español. Then we have associate, que es very similar. But in this case means to connect someone or something in your mind with someone or something else. Okay, asociar. Eh, por ejemplo, eh, tener como que las mismas ideas con otra persona sobre algo. So, for example, most people associate this brand with good quality. La mayoría de las personas asocia a esta marca con buena calidad. Okay, ya sabemos, es como una idea que tenemos sobre algo. Y luego tenemos associated. That basically means connected. For example, she was prepared to take on the job with all its associated risks. Okay, ella estaba lista para tomar este trabajo con todos los riesgos relacionados a ella. Relacionados o conectados, pero en este caso quedaría mejor relacionados. Ok, ¿any questions with these three words? No, sir. Benjamín, Alicia, ¿any questions with this? No. Ok, then we have attend. Do you know this word? Attend. To take a, a, a meeting or take a class. Okay. To take a meeting, to take a class. Excellent. Uh, Mejamina, Alicia, do you know this word? Uh, atender, atender a alguien, atender a algo. Okay. Okay. Alicia, do you know this thing? Uh, eh, sí, así como asistir, entrar, bueno, okay. sí, asistir como a algo. Ok, good. Ok, asistir, tomar una clase, atender. Bueno, en este caso hay como que mucha confusión entre este verbo y con otro que tenemos en inglés. Eh, si vemos este verbo, podemos decir en español que podría significarse atender, pero en inglés tiene otro significado. Como mencionó su compañero, su compañero eh, significa to go to an event, place, etc. Ir a un evento, a un lugar, entre otros. Por ejemplo, over 200 people attended the funeral. Más de 200 personas fueron o asistieron al funeral. The meeting is on the fifth, and we're hoping everyone will log in. La reunión es en el quinto piso, y esperamos que todos vayan, o que todos asistan. And then we have this word in English, assist. Y si lo traduciríamos en español, podríamos pensar que significa asistir. Pero en inglés significa to help, ayudar a alguien. For example, the army arrived to assist in the search. Eh, el ejército llegó para ayudar en la búsqueda. O, oh, you will be expected to assist the editor with the selection of illustrations for the book. Se espera que ayudes al editor con la selección de, de imágenes para el libro. ¿Ok? Así que podemos ver una diferencia. Attend significa ir a algún lugar, evento, entre otros. Y assist significa ayudar. Ayudar a alguien 
Acteral. Okay, can you see the difference between these two words? Yep. yep. Okay, and um, Benjamin, Alisa, can you see the difference? Yes. Okay, uh, so can anyone give me an example using a then? I will be at uh, meeting at 11 o'clock. Okay, I will be attending a meeting at 11 o'clock. Okay, that's a good example. Alicia, can you give me an example using attend? Okay, I... Mm. I attend, uh, I will, uh, I will attend uh, the family meeting uh, on the weekend. Okay, excellent. I will attend the family meeting on the week. Okay, excellent. And um, Benjamin, can you give an example using attend, please? Sure, I, I can attend this call. I can attend this. Okay, which word do you mention? I can I can attend this this call. This course. Okay, I I can attend this. Okay. That's what you mentioned. This call? Uh, no call, call the llamada. Okay. Okay, this call. Uh, for example, um. In this case, we use the verb. Let me write in the chat. We use, I can take this call. Okay. We use attend for uh, to go to an event, place, etc. Okay. But in this case, you mentioned, uh, yo puedo tomar esta llamada. Uh, Entonces usamos el verbo take okay, en vez de attend. Can you see the difference? Benjamin, can you see the yes. difference between these two sentences? Yes. Okay, so for example, you can say, as I wrote, I can attend this course. Yo puedo ir a este curso. O yo puedo ir a, a tal lugar, a tal evento. ¿Queda claro? Ok, sí. Ok, thank you, Benjamin. So, then we have uh, the word attend. Attend. So, let's see what it means. Attend means a someone who goes to a place, event, etc. For example, Alicia mentioned that she will be attending a family meeting this weekend. So she is an attendee. Okay, attendee is someone que, que asiste a algún evento, alguna reunión, etc. Okay, for example, Edgar mentioned that he will be attending a meeting at 11 o'clock. So, so Edgar is an attendee. Okay, porque él va a ir a este evento, a esta reunión. ¿Queda claro? Es la persona. Yes. And finally, we have attendance. Do you know what is attendance? I think you, you know it. Like the action? Like the action, okay. It's the action. Okay, let's see. The fact that the fact of going somewhere, such as a church, school, etc., regular. Okay, es la acción. Es la acción de ir a algún lugar. Aquí, por ejemplo, tenemos es el hecho de ir a algún lugar, como alguna iglesia, escuela, reunión, etc., entre otros. Okay, es lo que hacemos. Attendance at lecture is compulsory. La asistencia. Entonces, en caso, attendance es asistente. Attendance at lecture is compulsory. La asistencia a las 
a la conferencia es obligatoria. Ok. So we have attendant as assistant. Ok. For example, at school we usually say we're going to take attendant. Have you ever heard this, this phrase? Take attendant? No. Es lo que decimos los maestros en la escuela. Eh, vamos a tomar asistencia. Oh. Okay. Well, so far, do you have any questions with these six words? Uh, sorry, uh, it's a difference between. Okay, so do you have any more questions about this, about vocabulary? So, Okay, uh, yes. can you hear me now? Can you hear me now, guys? Sorry. Yeah, I can hear yeah. you. Yeah, okay, so, so I was having problems with my microphone, so I'm here again. Well, so let's continue then. Uh, do you have any more questions about this? I couldn't hear if you mentioned something. No, no yet. No yet, okay. Benjamin, Alisa, do you have any questions? No. Oh, it's okay. It's okay, okay. Thank you, Alisa, Benjamin, and Edgar. Okay, we only have 10 minutes before this lesson finish. So we're gonna do a, a quick activity. Uh, well, in the last class, we were um, doing an activity related to this, to this picture. Do you remember this picture? Yeah, I remember. You remember? Megamin, Alicia, do you remember? Yes. Okay, so here we have 15 topics, as I mentioned in the previous lesson. But in this case, we're gonna uh, apply what we have learned today. In this case, suggestions and advice. Okay, for example, if I ask you about a uh, honeymoon, do you know what is honeymoon? Yeah, when you marry, uh, sometimes you go to uh, some place to relax when you're coming. Okay. When you get married, you usually travel to somewhere to spend time with, in this case, with your wife, with your husband, okay? So, what we can say about a honeymoon? What would you suggest uh, to have a good honeymoon? Uh, Edgar, what do you suggest? Or what is your advice? But you have to use should, could, need to, depending on what, what you say. 
Well, uh, my suggestion uh, could be uh, Jim Moscow when uh, guys have an agree and they love that place. Okay, you should yes that both agree to go to the same place, right? To spend time together. Okay. That's it, right? Yep. Okay. Alicia, what do you think about honeymoon? What would you suggest? Maybe uh, you can uh, a large trip uh, for uh, take a um, uh, um, a large uh, time uh, in the trip. Okay. To have um, you 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 mean to have or to travel many days, right? Yeah. Okay. In this case, we say instead of large, we say a long trip. Okay, a long trip. Okay, that's a good. You can have uh, a long trip. Do you know the difference between large and long? Uh, large is alto. Alto, okay. Podría ser. And long. Uh, como en distancia. Okay, en distancia. Okay, the difference between large and long is that we use large for a close spaces. Okay, utilizamos large para espacios cerrados. Por ejemplo, podemos decir a large building. Que es un, un edificio muy, muy grande, muy alto. Y we use eh, long, como mencionó su compañera, para distancia. Okay, that's a long trip. It's a long time. Es mucho tiempo, demasiado tiempo. Es un viaje muy largo. Okay, can you see the difference? Yes. Okay, so let's continue then. And Benjamin, what would you suggest for a, to have a good moon, honeymoon? Maybe it's, 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 a, it's a travel for, for any, any place in, in the world. Mm. 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 The preference for uh, a play, uh, a beautiful place, a beach or a romantic place, no sé, France, it's Paris, um, or any 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 place the 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 wife or or husband uh, like like go to 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 know. Okay, so you suggest to go to a romantic place like Paris or. Um, or to different places in the world, right? So your sentence will probably be, you should travel to a romantic place. You should, or you have to travel, you can travel, you could travel, okay? You can use any of these modal verbs uh, to suggest something, okay? Okay. Okay, so... Let's do one more and we finish with today's lesson. Let's um, okay. Talk about why people should visit your country. Okay. Por qué la gente debería visitar su país. Edgar, can you start, please? Uh... Uh... As a suggestion, uh, why don't you visit Mexico City 
uh, it's a, a a huge uh city when where you can go wherever you want and there's amazing people at, at this city okay that's good that's excellent why don't you visit my country why don't por qué no visitas mi ciudad oh, perdón, mi país. why don't you visit okay that's a good use of the model bird thank you Edgar and Alicia can you talk about it please Uh, yes, um, because you could uh, visit uh, beautiful uh, places uh, that uh, normally the people don't know. Okay, you could visit uh, beautiful places that people don't normally know. Okay, you make good use of the model verb, good. Okay, thank you, Alicia. And finally, Benjamin, can you talk about it, please? Uh, yes, uh, because it is a country with a lot of variety of in food, cult culture, pyramid, uh, and natural beauty. Okay, it's a country with variety of food, and you should you should visit the nature you mentioned. Uh, natural beauty. Okay, you should visit uh, the natural beauty. Okay, that's a good example. Um, Benjamin? Well, it's almost nice. Uh, to... Do you have any questions about what we learned today? No, so far. Not so far. Okay, Benjamin, Alisa, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. No, it, it's okay. It's okay. No. Okay, guys. So, well, if you don't have any more questions, that will be it for today. And I'll see you next week. I hope you have an amazing weekend. Uh, Edgar, I hope you have an amazing weekend because it's your birthday. And also, Benjamin, Alicia, I hope you have a nice weekend. Thanks, Jose. Thanks, guys. Have a nice weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thanks. much. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye.